So I'm a barber myself. But HH, hey, hey, who cuts your hair? Well, I'm gonna show you how and who exactly cuts my hair. So I'm doing a high taper and the first step is to water the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to section the hair on the top from the sides. That way it will make it easier for us to do the sides without touching any of, it, any of the length that we like on top. So we're going to separate the sides from the top just so then we don't cut any of the length that we want on top. I want to keep some length at the top so then we're going to use our clips to get everything nice and tidy up there. I'm even going to section the back. That way we can keep that bulk we want at the back. So my first step, I'm gonna be coming in with a blade closed and I'm making my guideline right where this vertical bar is. So I'm stopping it right there and ending it just where my ear starts to connect. So this is a high taper. I'm making that slight curve so then my taper can have a little bit of character towards it. I'm going to do the exact same thing at the back while I'm creating my guideline. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm creating about an inch and a half coming down this way. And then I also want to flick out because the back is actually really hard. So I'm going to flick out. I'm using my 1.5 to just flick out on all that bulk. That will allow us and make it easier for us to come in later and blend everything up, okay? Boom. Next step, using my flat cone, I'm gonna do clipper over comb. I'm gonna grab it down like this. Pull the ear down, scoop in, and then try to get all this bulk, and then this allows us to create the shape. And I'm just taking off all that bulk. This way we can create our shape that we want and also create the canvas, okay? The canvas is so important. And then I'm just creating that shape and then slowly just taking off little by little. See all that bulk up there? I want this to flare out. I wanna kind of create that like flare out shape. So we're going to do what I like. And that's the beautiful thing about cutting your own hair is that you cut it how you like it, baby. So now I'm going to line up the canvas and the canvas is basically, if you watch my YouTube video, all the people that see my tutorials on YouTube, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to line up the neckline here and I'm going to start at the top of the ear and then slowly coming down, following that straight line all the way down. The reason why we do the lineup first before we do our fading process is because it allows us to create that template and allows us to see all the dark lines before. In my fading system, you always line up before you do your fading process. So I'm going to comb all the hairs down and then I'm gonna start at the middle point. I'm gonna take it quite high because I haven't got a cut in a while and I've been growing it out. I am starting at that point, bringing that same line all the way to the other side. And I'm gonna be real careful over here because this is a very dangerous spot because you can take that shit way back and then taking little little bits making sure i don't go past that like corner because that corner is real crucial boom and then you guys see that little guy right there that little guy i'm going to come in with my three guard and i'm going to just try to take off that guy and that guy is gone <laughs> And I'm consistently just combing down, always, just to see. Now we can see that guy a lot clearer. You see right there, I'm going to make that corner nice and sharp. Taking my time, because the lineup is a super important part of the fade. If you have a bad fade, and then you have a decent lineup, it still looks alright. But if you have a whack lineup, then it's gonna look horrible because all the symmetrics are off. What I like to do to help me is I use my straight razor. I would actually come in and pull the skin out like this way and then take that vertical bar so then it's nice and crispy 
before we even do any type of fading work. And now that I've got this side nice and crispy, I'm going to do the other side. And when we're creating this line, it does not have to be super perfect because we're going to come back and make it like super crispy at the end. We just want to have nice clean lines before we even start anything. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to move on because you don't want to spend too much time. The way you want to spend the most time is the detailing. And now I'm going to come in open. I'm going to go a centimeter above this line right here and making sure I don't take this fade any higher because it's already a high fade. We don't want to take it any higher. And then also when I've created that line, now I'm going to flick out. Okay, I'm going to flick out right ever so slightly, not making sure not to take the fade any higher than it has to be. Making sure we take micro, micro flicks. This will help us taking out that line later. And then grabbing my half guard and then slapping that on me clipper, going open and then one close it. We're going to flick out and try to blend it in into all that bulk up there. See how I am using my wrists? See this motion right here? That's the money motion right there. Many of, of you may know that I have a burst fade, but I'm switching it up now. Now I'm going to do the same thing at the back. I'm going to go up about quite thick actually, because I want to create this illusion that this line is dark, okay? I'm going to do like a centimeter here, but then it creates this start to V off, and there's this U type of shape at the back. That will be one of our guidelines because watch, how this starts to look at the end. Same thing, half guard and one shy. I'm going to use that half to flick out onto the top up here. Watch, it will just come off effortlessly. Look, I haven't done much and it's already out. Now we can do a little bit of detailing midway and take that out. And see how this line just looks dark already? I haven't even done much. Watch until I take, I close it, the blade, and then make it look fire. Now I'm going to be doing my shear work. This is what it's looking like at the moment. If you guys want to see how I do my shear work on the top, like this video, comment, and maybe I'll you know drop a video for you boys and how I do it. And what I do with the lineup, I'm going to come in with my two guard open and I'm going to go down in it just to get rid of some of all that bulk, right? That will enable me to take a bit of bulk off without sacrificing the sharpness of the thing. Right, I'm only going to do this in the middle of the lineup because I don't want to make those corners light. I want those corners nice and dark so then it could be nice and crispy. Boom. And after doing that, if you can see, I don't have that hat anymore and that shelf. Um, I'm going to be losing some SPF protection, but at least we look fly. I absolutely love doing self cuts because when you cut your hair yourself, you can do it exactly how you want it. When you go to someone else, you might tell them something, but then they might execute it differently or just like miscommunication. But when you do it yourself, you know exactly what you want. At the start, it's going to be really hard for you to start, but once you take that first step after your first cut, it's going to get easier and easier and easier because your brain is going to be able to understand those motor skills. So I had heaps of fun doing this cut. I think it turned out really well. And honestly, this is probably one of my last times doing a haircut like this. I'm probably gonna shave it off, start fresh. Appreciate you guys so much. Comment down below what you guys would like to see from me. I'm gonna be consistently looking at the comments. Let me know what I should do. And if you got any value out of this, you know what to do. Appreciate you guys.